Hello students, this is Indrani Sen and we are learning DBMS and this lecture is on database management system architecture. When we are talking about a DBMS architecture, mainly we talk about client server architecture because database is stored in the server and is remotely accessible by various clients. That is multiple clients can access the database from the server. The advantage of using client server architecture is the database can be centrally located and can be accessible by multiple clients and security and everything can be deployed in a central server. Consider we are talking about an employee database in which the database is stored in the server and there are various clients who need a lot, uh, multiple things, multiple requirements. Like for example, client one, uh, client one uh, in that system, the employee needs to print place space slips. In client from client two system, it is uh, the employee, base, uh, a new employee got, gets hired, so he it uh, wants to add a new employee into the database. The client three one employee has resigned so one employee record has to be deleted from the database so multiple uh, requirements are there and multiple things can be performed concurrently from the employee database through the remote server there are two types of client server architecture which we can talk about the first type is a two tier architecture in which the client is directly connected to the server. There is no middle layer. The client is directly connected to the server. There can be multiple servers or there can be a single server with multiple clients. The DBMS has a client component which resides at the client machine and a server component which is located at the server. We know that DBMS is a software. So in this, in this case, the software has two components, a client, uh, a client end, that is if you are talking about Oracle, we, ha we have to install the Oracle client in the client's uh, system as well as Oracle server needs to be installed in the uh, servers. For example, we uh, we consider about an airline database in which a user one sitting in an airline's counter at the client machine on one request to reserve a ticket for a certain seat to the airline's data server. At the same time, user two at client two request for the same seat. The conflict is resolved at either the client's or the server side. So in this case, a conflict arises if two people are fighting for the same seat, then whom, uh, to whom the seat will be given or to whom the seat will be finally allocated is decided by the DBMS at its end by the programming logic which is employed either at the client side or at the server side. In two-tier architecture, uh, the uh, client has the application program interface or the API from where he can directly fire queries and it gets resolved and data uh, the query gets fired to the remote server from which the results get retrieved and it's being sent to the client. In this case, to tier application, the performance will go down depending upon the increasing number of users because there is because there is only one server. We are considering that there is tremendous load on the server. Multiple clients, but are so are giving requests, but only one server is there to serve the request. The server can respond to only one request at a time, so the response time will also be very slow. There are two types of approach in the client server application. One is fat client or thin server approach in this case the uh, programming logic or the uh, validations are being located in the application program interface itself so load on the server is minimized it inserts the programming logic as much as possible on the client removing the data processing burden from the server and another approach is thin client or fat server approach in this case we are putting the programming logic on the server itself so clients do not have any validation. 
and in this case the uh, there is a light client that consumes few client resources and requires a large amount of server work what is the uh, advantages and disadvantage of both this approach in a fat client approach what happens the load on the server is minimized because the validation and all other uh, all other functions are there with the client itself but there is a disadvantage as you are putting everything on the client uh, like for example you are uh, putting your credit card number validation on the client itself there is a chance of security tampering there is a uh, there is a malpractice which is known as sql injection with the help of which uh, the data can be tampered by the client and uh, wrong sql query or malicious sql query can be fired from the client's end causing a a data de being deleted at the server end so to minimize that effect we should put the programming logic in the server itself that is the val data validation to should be done by the server itself and then it should be allowed to access the database but in this case if you put all the programming logic on the server the burden on the server becomes much more to resolve all these conflicts we have a three tier architecture which is a intermediate between the two types of architecture so here there is a middle layer where the programming logic everything is embedded so we have three types of layer here one is the client layer which is also known as the presentation layer which contains the api which is basically the user friendly interface of your application with the help of which you are able to access the database what is an api for example you are you want to open an uh, account in gmail finally uh, the so you are filling up a sign up form the sign up form is basically an api which is in front of the users they are not able to understand the database actually the program is actually inserting data into your remote database your account information is being added to the account table of your uh, remote google server next we have this business layer in this layer we have all types of calculations validations everything being located in this business layer this uh, layer is loaded with lots of security so that there is no kind of malicious practices or tampering which can happen at this layer and at the last layer we have the data layer which is connected to the actual database we have a three tier architecture you can see the image of the three tier architecture on your screen in which we have a client which is the api and in between we have a business layer which in turn queries the dbms which is located remotely what are the advantages the advantages are high performance scalability in this case even if you increase the number of users uh, the uh, you in case you increase the number of uh, users the server's performance won't deteriorate so each tier can scale horizontally performance due to the presence of application server load on the database tier is reduced we can improve data integrity that data can be stored accurately and the integrity constraints are not violated and improve security because you are not loading any programming logic on the client itself there is no chance of any malicious practices or malicious injections uh, to the database we can see another example of this three tier architecture in which we have uh, different types of application servers here we can see bank account application server then we have a credit card application server and we have a loan application server which is connected to the databases being located on only one server remote server and the uh, each of the clients with the help of their on the basis of their requirements will be accessing that particular application server so load on the dbm database is far more reduced what is data manager data manager is a component of dbms it is not uh, it's a just a logical component in data manager is a central software component which is known as the database control system it is a program module that provides interface between the low level data stored in the database and the application programs and queries submitted to the system it is responsible for the following task one is authorization which checks the authority or access of the user next is integrity checker it checks whether the data is being saved apart, uh, 
with on the based based on the integrity constraints that it is whether it is satisfying all the constraints which are there laid down in the database like a primary key foreign key constraints then we have the transaction manager which manages and maintains data consistency in case of a conflict when more than one person is trying to access the same data the conflict is being resolved with the help of transaction manager based on priorities scheduler it controls which order the uh, transactions should be executed we have the recovery manager which uh, which takes in control which comes in control when there is a crash which has occurred in the database buffer managers in case more than one transactions are getting executed they can be stored in the buffer and lastly we have the file manager which maintains the structures of the files and manages the file space when a user searches for a particular record the file manager locates a block containing the required record which block the block which is in the hard disk the exercises which you need to do here are you have to know the differences between a two tier and three tier architecture and you can learn short notes on ddl which is data definition language what are the queries which are there in data definition language like uh, we have create uh, we can create any object in the database management system with the help of ddl statements next we have dml statements that is we can manipulate like insert update delete records in the database with the help of dml statements query optimizer engine that is the queries which are being evaluated query evaluation engine or optimizer engine checks the queries and reduces the cost of the queries now uh, before they uh, being evaluated we have the buffer manager what work the buffer manager does we have to note that work that is how the transactions are being stored in the buffer and how they are executed one by one and we have transaction manager how the transaction manager resolves conflicts with the help of logs and we have the data dictionary data dictionary is an object which stores all the audit informations on the database that is when the tables are being created who has created the tables who has modified the tables who has updated the table what time the table was deleted and so on lastly we have the disk manager which is at the lowest level it is the part of the operating system on the host computer and all physical input and output operations are performed by it thank you for being a patient listener have a nice day